ka khalsa waheguru ji ki fateh i like to do a humble birthday to all the youth to please come and sit down the following two speeches were written with the youth as the target audience second i would like to ask for the forgiveness from the sangat and guru sahib if i may say anything that hurts any member of my community this week marks the 30th anniversary of a brutal attack on the bar side and a massive genocide of the six that's 30 years of prevailing impunity in india 30 years of injustices going unanswered and unchallenged however this 30th year let's go more in depth than the usual never forget 84 slogans we have never forgot there has not been a time where we forgot the 1984 attack on darbar sahib because who can forget those innocent six rounded up and shot at point blank range no one will forget thousands of innocent six breathing their last with the smell of blood heavy in the air let's try to imagine the pain of a sick mother when she realized that her 3 month old baby was convicted as a militant the pain of when she she saw his broken body covered with dry blood let's imagine how she felt when she realized that her 3 month old child who she once had in her arms was tortured to death by the indian security forces just because he was a sick we haven't forgotten because we remind ourselves every year through protests remembrance events and candle night vigils however what we have forgotten is the reason why the indian government orchestrated this attack and genocide the attack didn't occur because of heated tension between indira gandhi and sant janal singh ji nor because the indian government wanted to take custody of the armed sikh resistors in the darbar sahib complex in actuality the indian government planned that attack because of a persistent anti sikh ideology that has always been prevailing in the indian majority this was one of the many historical attacks orchestrated in attempt to subjugate the sikh continuous non acceptance of a tyrannical authority today we stand in a darker place than those sikhs who were convicted tortured and killed sikhs were convicted and killed because they refused to compromise their sovereign state of mind they refused to give up their sikhi and their right as human beings to basic civil and human rights although they were hunted and disappeared electrocuted and killed sikhs continue to challenge corrupt powers and human rights abusers at this moment although we enjoy a thousand more comfort we now fear to assert ourselves while we hold gurmat camps and share stories of great mahan sikh figures defying inhumane governments and monarchies we hold our children back if they try to do the same even when some of us rises to the occasion and challenges india's corruption whether it's through a street protest or a khalistani program at a gurdwara the rest of us ostracize them and scoff at their attempts and don't go to those programs so what happened what occurred within these past years that made us believe that the sikh community can politically assert itself a sikh spirituality is very political in itself sant and sapahi the concept of a spiritual warrior is embedded in our very roots the sikh has an ethic of acceptance and equality alongside an active opposition to tyranny and injustice a sikh spirituality the sovereign state of the mind threatens the status quo power whether it's the mughal raj in 1700s british imperialism ending in 1947 or today's hindu india because sikhs have always offered a spiritual political alternative the totalist state has always carried an anti sikh ideology which still exists amongst the indian majority in 1947 the british colonizers handed the keys of the jail to the indian majority who fo- still follows the brahmanistic totalitarian I- ideology and policy let's remember that this is the same ideology that guru nanak dev ji rejected when he pushed away the jail in the late 1400s the current indian government is an illegitimate occupational force an entity completely fabricated due to british imperialism we are fighting against a colonized government that's built on subjugating its minorities and ethnic groups let's remember what six fought for what we asked for for the government today we say why do we need khalistan why do we need a sovereign state in the 1900s we asked for a federal status a regional rights to the land we fought so hard for during the indian independence movement 
However, the Indian majority was fearful that if Punjab was given a federal status, the hegemonistic hold over the Sikh mind and psyche would weaken. Before 1990, sorry, 1966, the Indian government distributed the water of the rivers that run through Punjab to the bordering states such as Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan, Jammu and Kashmir. Hadn't six just played a major role in India's independence? What hadn't we done to secure the rights to our own land, language and resources? Here, it's essential that we understand that at the time, government parties weren't just government political parties. They acted as representatives of an anti-Sikh ideology and policy. Every step was taken by the Indian government to de-establish the Sikh sovereign state of mind. What about the 1955 government attack on Darbar Sahib? Bullets were fired, tear gas bombs were thrown within the Sangat, and the Singh Singhania inside the Darbar Sahib complex were beaten by security forces. The head Granthi, Pai Mani Singh, was arrested. The head Granthi of Darbar Sahib and the Jathidar of Akal Taksad were taken into custody and detained. Why was this ferocious attack orchestrated in 1955? There were no Sikh resistors within the Darbar Sahib complex at that time, nor were there any insurgents. Again, this proves that the Congress Party of India carried out this attack because they wanted to de-establish the sovereign Sikh psyche, to create a fear within the Sikh community so badly that we would stop asking for our rights as a people. It's extremely necessary, especially for us youth, to understand our political history and know the reasons why we ask for Khalistan a free Punjab, rid of an Indian government occupation. This history is just as important as learning about Pai Bachitar Singh, Pai Mani Singh and Baba Deep Singh Ji. However, we fail to give it importance in the fear that Sikhi and politics shouldn't mix. In fact, the histories of Pai Bachitar Singh, Pai Mani Singh and Baba Deep Singh and the other great Mahan Singhs of our history remind us of how Sikhs reacted in the face of oppression and injustice. However, let's remember our modern day Singh and Singhania who even in the face of adversity never once compromised their rights. The greatest example I can give is Sant Jarnayam Singh Ji Khalsa Pind Rawale, one of the greatest and most unrecognized revolutionaries of the modern time. Prav Jodh Singh, a young Sikh thinker and activist in Punjab writes, with the emergence of Sant Jarnayam Singh Ji on the Sikh political spectrum, the totalitarian Indian government became full of fear hatred and anger as Santaji was working to rekindle the spirit of a distinct identity of the Sikh people as well as making the Sikh population aware of their rich heritage. When Santaji Rehan Singh Ji became Jathadar for Damdami Taksal, a Sikh organization, he increased his deeds in helping the Sikhs remember their history and sovereign state of the mind. He simply asked for Sikhs to question themselves and their government. And for the first time since the rule of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the Sikh masses became conscious of their Sikh national and cultural traits. What Santiji started was a revolution of the consciousness, a self-actualization and a self-awareness. However, the Indian government responded harshly to their Sikhs united cry for their basic civil and human rights. The police officers and other Indian security officials began committing human rights abuses. The government of India tried extremely hard to abolish the Sikhs' distinct identity. And now, under the leadership of Santa Jarnam Singh Ji, Sikhs raised their consciousness and actively challenged corrupt powers through civil disobedience and other means. The government responded harshly with rape, arrest, and detention by security forces and murder. Sikhs were literally pushed into a militancy. When, when the law, constitution, and the government of a country that you call your own moves to crush your people, your identity, and your principles, you have nowhere else to go. You are pushed in a corner. And this way, the Sikhs were pushed into a militant and revolutionary status. Sadhguru so Jarnayal Singh Ji was not one person. He personified an army, taking on a morally and politically corrupt Indian government. In the view of the situation, Indira Gandhi decided once and for all to crush the Sikh movement and consciousness. Although the government released statements explaining the reasons they entered the Sahib in 1984 was to remove armed Sikh resistors, I wasn't aware that a nation's army, helicopters, bombs, tanks and snipers were needed to remove just one Sant Dhanayal Singh and less than 200 armed Sikh resistors. The purpose of the attack, codenamed Operation Blue Star, is clear. It was to teach a lesson to the entire Sikh community in India and abroad. 
It was a way for the Indian government to demolish the emerging Sikh leadership upholding the ideology of Sikh independence and there would be no hindrance into successfully converting India in a monolithic state. The rest of my paper is talking about the Khalistani movement. I'm well aware that we're very short on time, so I'd like to cut my paper quite a bit. The Khalistani movement started as soon as the Indian army stepped foot inside their Barzan, because the attack itself was not just an attack on a center of Sikh worship, it was an attack on the foundations of Sikhi, as well as the entire Sikh community. So many of us died, and so many of us were shot at point blank range. And everyone's hearts bled that a country we fought so hard for couldn't recognize us as citizens. So the need for Khalistan became clear. Why, why should we call ourselves Indians when we aren't given any rights as citizens of India? A few of us either say Khalistan, Zindabad, and the rest of us ostracize them. We are mistaken to believe that Khalistan only represents a country's name. It has always been more, and Santa Jarnal Singh Ji recognized that. So did the Singh Singhani, who refused to compromise themselves and their freedoms. But we have failed in that sense. So in a way, the Indian government was successful in disrupting the Sikh psyche and mindset. We have lost our sovereign state of the mind and replaced it with this obsession to portray ourselves as a peaceful, passive people. We shouldn't feel shamed in saying Khalistan. And we shouldn't feel shame and demanding our rights and freedoms. And let's start portraying ourselves as a self-determined community. Historically, we have always been a very free-spirited people. Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj blessed us in Rag Asa, Manatun Jodh Sarup Hai, Apna Moon Pashan, which literally means that our minds are the embodiment of something greater. Let's recognize that sovereign consciousness and distinguish our distinct identity. How did Khalistan, something that many Sikhs gave their lives over not too long ago, become a joke amongst leaders and the youth today? We say we respect our Shaheed, but they were Shaheed in the name of Khalistan, and we purposely forget that, or we fear to recognize it. We should redefine the word Khalistan itself, not throw it away, embrace it, and educate ourselves on our recent history. Let's not victimize ourselves any further, and let's not pass that self-victimizing mindset to the younger generation, who has already started to internalize it. Let's stop ostracizing members of our own community who try to the best of their ability to address these issues when they celebrate Khalistan in a sovereign state of the mind. Let's remember that we come from a history of revolutionaries and a sovereign people. Let's start today with the revolution of the consciousness and remove the fear we have in politically asserting ourselves. Here, we have a right to raise our voice against injustices and human rights abuses without the fear of being persecuted. So let's not compromise ourselves any more than we already have. Let's remember our Guru Saiban, who have blessed us with Jardikla and our Shaheed, who paved the way for us to assert our identity. As long as we hear gunshots from an Indian security official's pistol echoing across the fields of Punjab as it targets another innocent Sikh, and as long as we feel the pain of thousands of Sikhs murdered and disappeared in a silent genocide, and as long as Indian jails are filled with innocent Singhs and Singhania falsely convicted for crimes they have never committed, our hope for a sovereign nation where a Sikh's basic civil and human rights aren't compromised will always remain strong. Our need for Khalistan, where a Sikh's very identity isn't attacked by a government will always remain alive. When we empower our consciousness, we empower ourselves. And if we empower ourselves, we empower our community. I request the Sangat to please raise their fists as I lead us into Panch Khalistan the Nare. Bole Sorihala! Again, I apologize if I hurt anyone's hearts. Why would you go, Khalsa? Why would you give for